Hey guys, James Wilson Taylor here for Rock Sound. It's another of our video calls. We are catching up with everybody while we're all at home at the minute. I'm delighted to say from Mayday Parade, Mr. Derek Sanders is on the line. How are you, Derek? I'm doing very well today. How are you? Not too bad, man. Not too bad. Surviving. That's what we're all saying at the minute, isn't it? We're surviving in the strange, strange year we're having. And uh, I will kick this off in the way we've kicked them all off, which is to say, of course, hope you and your family and your loved ones are all staying safe, staying well in these very strange few months we've had. Um, how has your lockdown kind of been going for you? How have you been keeping busy these last few months? Yeah, I mean, it's been totally crazy, that's for sure. This year has been such a bummer. Um, but, you know, I, I've been trying to kind of find the silver lining to it. I've been trying to, I mean, for me, in the last 15 years of my life, I haven't had this much time at home, uh, like, you know, ever. So that's one thing that like, it is kind of nice to just be able to like live in one place for several months at a time, um, which I literally haven't done, you know, at all in the last 15 years and just be with my family and um, try and stay busy working on a lot of music, working on a lot of house stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the worst part of it, I guess, is just being so confined and wanting to be able to, you know, go out and do things that we can't do. Um, but it's kind of like, you know, I feel like with everyone else, it's almost become pretty normal, uh, you know, at this point, as sad as, as sad as it is to say. Um, but, um, yeah, we're getting through it and we're not, we're not like, you know, seriously struggling, which I know a lot of people are. And so I'm very grateful that, you know, I've, I've been trying to just appreciate what I have and the position that I'm in, um, and, uh, just kind of try to keep on trucking through it, you know? Yeah, of course, as we all are, man, as we all are. I'm glad to hear you guys are doing okay. And, and like you say, new music to release is always very nice. Let's get right to it. There is an EP that is imminent at the time of recording. Um, very interesting to see that this, this has kind of come out. I mean, we'll talk about loads of stuff, but I wasn't quite expecting new music from you this quick. When did this one come together? Is this a lockdown project? Was this a little bit beforehand? Yeah, so the timing of this was actually kind of crazy. Um, we went into the studio uh, early March of this year um, and recorded these three songs. And at the time, weren't really sure exactly, you know, even what it was going to be all about. We've been kind of bouncing in and out of the studio a bit over the last year, I guess. And uh, I, I think the mindset was pretty much to kind of gear up towards releasing another full length. Um, as we were in the studio recording these songs is when kind of all hell broke loose and and the world kind of shut down and um so we you know made it home from that and have been kind of in lockdown ever since for the most part um but so we decided that you know we're just there's we're there's so much that we can't do we had to postpone so many of our plans for touring and festivals and shows and all that um but we figured you know we we have these songs recorded and we can release this music and um, hopefully it can be something that, you know, people look forward to and enjoy and just seemed like, why not? You know, we've got the songs ready to go. Let's, let's put some songs out. We're still kind of trying to, we still have some songs that we're sort of holding on to right. for the next, for the next full length. Um, but this is a way of kind of getting something out there to help, uh, you know, just fill some of that time whenever we're unable to do so much of what we normally do, you know? Yeah, absolutely. No, it definitely makes sense. It's always good to have new music out at the minute, man. Absolutely. Um, let's dive into it then. I'll, I'll start with the title. It's always a good place to start because uh, Out of Here is the title. Why did you decide that that was going to be what summed up these these three tracks, this taster of what's next for you guys? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, I feel like it, it kind of like this is in particular more so for the first two songs on the album, uh, First Train and Lighten Up Kid are both kind of about just like moving forward and um, like, yeah, just like, you know, not getting, not getting stuck and not getting weighed down by negativity um, and just kind of having the power to, to keep moving forward. Um, it's also, obviously it's a lyric in the song first train is let's take the first train out of here. Um, and I don't know, we just kind of thought that was cool. And especially just in these current, you know, times of, of craziness, the idea of you know getting out of here and and just getting out of this current state and moving moving forward is uh, uh, just seemed kind of um, just appropriate, I, I, I suppose. Yeah. Yeah, very apt to have some songs of escapism right now. I'm sure it definitely makes sense in that vibe for sure. Um, let's go through them then, because yeah, first train you've mentioned right there. Uh, 
it's I mean it's big man it's big anthemic stuff you've gone for here I really like the CP by the way I'll say that up top but like it's almost heavier than maybe some of the last album I would say it sort of feels like you're kind of playing in heavier territory on that one talk to me about how that one in particular came together for you yeah for sure well I mean uh, yeah first of all I absolutely love that song um I, I I you know obviously it's kind of difficult to say because it's so new but I think that it's one of my favorite songs that we've ever recorded. Um, I do love that it is, it's more of the, you know, rock and roll side of, of Mayday Parade and does, you know, in my opinion, has this, you have this kind of anthemic, you know, chorus and everything. And um, I don't know, it just kind of, uh, yeah, it was just kind of the right, the right time for it. And, and uh, uh, yeah, it's, it's hard to really say, but, but it's just, yeah, it's a very great, great tune i love it so i can't wait to play that song live i can't wait to see what people's reactions are to it um i think it really kicks off the ep in a, such a nice way i love the, the the riff and everything and uh yeah it's a cool song and again it's just you know it's about you know, just moving moving forward you know moving on to to better things yeah it's, it's as you say kicking off live because uh, i think both both these first, i mean they'll all go down well live but particularly these first two tracks on it because lighting up kid as well I mean, that's as close as you're going to get to that classic early noughties pop punk sound that you're ever going to get. It's almost like you're channeling that era again. It's really, really nice to hear. Again, what was the, the thinking behind that track? Yeah, for sure. Well, that's, that's, that's kind of the idea with that one was like, a, you know, that's a song that Jake wrote, our drummer Jake wrote the majority of that song. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just kind of like that, you know, early to mid 2000s pop punk energy um it's got such a fun um just energy to it in in my opinion um and uh yeah it's pretty straightforward like nothing no like you know new territory with that one it's just kind of like the classic you know pop punk made a parade best we can do kind of kind of thing it's great to hear though like you say it's fun it's nice to have that right in the center of this ep just a big chunk of fun that again i think will absolutely go off when shows come back um and then we get of course a softer moment which i, I guess is, is more in line with some of the your more recent material i would say but yeah i can only hope really beautiful little ballad there really nicely done again when did that one come together for you yeah uh thank you uh that's that's one that i love as well um such a catchy song and of course I don't think it would be a Mayday Parade piece of work if we didn't have a you know, slower, sad song uh, on it. So that was, it was an important feature for sure. Um, that's actually, if I'm, that, that, that song we had recorded last year, it wasn't in this last session um, that we did that one. It was further back. I don't even remember when it was at this point. Uh, but last year we, we went in and recorded a handful of songs and, that one definitely, you know, kind of raised his hand is, is one of the stronger ones. Um, and so it just kind of made sense to, to put on this EP to kind of top things off and throw that, uh, that sad kind of ballad song in there. Yeah, it is a really, really nice mix of that kind of classic Mayday sound. But like I say, there's, I, I feel like there's some of your heavier material there on First Train. And then, then obviously the kind of classical box. It's nice to be having that balance. Is that what you're finding with the rest of these sessions? Like you say, it was intended for a full length. Is it a big mix this time? Is it in this kind of similar territory? What can you tell us about what's to come? Yeah, I mean, I think it, th th this is certainly a good indication of, you know, where things are headed. But I think we always will try to, um, you know, throw in some songs that kind of cover some new ground and, uh, you know, kind of venture into some new territory. Um, but we also, we've tried really hard, especially with, with Sunnyland and then moving forward to just focus on the things that we feel like we do well as a band um, and to kind of identify those things and just try and like, you know, yeah, just zero in on that and just like, you know, what is it that people love about our band and let's just do that the best that we can. And while at the same time also, you know, challenging ourselves and, and trying to push ourselves creatively um, and just kind of like mix all that together and, and whatever happens, happens, you know? Yeah, no, I'm excited to hear what's next on the basis of this, man. It's very, very cool. Definitely keeps, keeps the fans going in this strange time. It's very cool to see. Um, I want to dive back a little bit before we kind of move forward because of course, as much as it seems like so long ago now, given this hellscape of a year we're in, you had another covers EP out as well this year, man, yourself, uh, back in 
only February, which seems like a very long time ago now, but a cool project right. and clearly something you were very passionate about and clearly picking songs that really meant something to you. Um, I want to pick out a couple. Let's start with the Punk Rock Princess cover because, again, you did that for the Roxanne Summer Show as well, and thank you for that. Um, that is a track that's such a legendary emo night classic. You know, it's a big, big classic song. Why did you signal in on that and want to give a, a new take on that particular song? Yeah, well, I just, yeah, you know, same as what you said. I, I, I love that song so much. It's like my cat's here. She's trying to come give, give me some love. But, Dude, I'm, I'm always uh, like, more than happy for pet cameos in these. I don't know if you've seen yeah. any of these. We've had all manner of pets popping in. It's always good. Love that. Nice. Yeah. Um, but, you know, yeah, it's just I'm, I'm a huge something corporate fan. Um, I actually originally had wanted to try and do Constantine uh, on the cover EP but just eventually felt like that was a little too ambitious because that song is like nine minutes long. And it's just like, I don't know, I got like nervous about it. Um, but I but I was kind of, you know, on that same thought thinking I, I want to do a something corporate song. And um, I actually with Punk Rock Princess kind of like had this somewhat of a different arrangement. And it's not that big of a deal, but the, the very last chorus, I kind of have like a different chord progression underneath it that I think is like kind of cool and different. Um, and so I kind of wanted to, to sort of showcase that with, with all these songs, you know, it's like kind of hard to find that balance of like, how much do you change things? And are you changing things? Like, are you making it worse? Are you making it any better? Like what's the, you know, so it's kind of hard to like find that balance. And that was one where like, I really like that change a lot. And I feel like kind of does add something cool. Um, so that was kind of the thinking with that one. It's also just, yeah, an incredible song. Um, I feel like it's even kind of underrated. Like now, like I feel like, you know, if you played that song in an emo night, there'd be a lot of people who probably don't know it. Um, and that's, that kind of goes, for, I, I, with a lot of the songs, you know, they're not like the obvious like banger, you know, songs necessarily. They're just songs that I feel like, uh, you know, mean a lot to me and songs that helped me kind of like through my, you know, high school years. Um, and that was kind of the idea with all of them was to, um, sort of like, you know, give them another look as well for a lot of folks that may have never heard these songs or heard of these bands. Um, but yeah, it was, I was so much fun. I, I, I'm so happy about the EP and uh, hopefully going to look at doing another one here before too long, whenever it makes sense. But yeah. Yeah, I was going to ask, were there any kind of choices on the on the cutting room floor there? Because yeah, like you say, clearly picking songs you have a connection to. I mean, a praise chorus alone, what a legendary song that is in, in the circles we move in. I mean, were there any others that were just on the list you might want to have another go at soon? Yeah, there's a couple others. Um, and, you know, I guess the only one that comes to mind again was, you know, Constantine that was, was cut. There were a couple Jimmy Eat World songs I kind of played around with. Um, I don't know. We'll have to see. I, I kind of like the idea of like, if I do another covers EP at some point of doing like the same five bands, but just like a different song from each band. But I don't know if that's starting to get too repetitive. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm starting to kind of like give some thought into that. There's definitely, you know, a, a huge list of songs that I would love to get the chance to, to cover um, a lot of it's just kind of like trying it out. And again, like I, I did try out a lot of songs for this and if it didn't feel great or if it didn't feel right, or didn't feel like I was really going to be able to do it justice, I kind of, you know, moved on. Um, but there's a lot, there's lots more I'm going to try and mess around with and see what happens. Ah, I'd like to see it, man. I'd like to see it. Would you, did you get any uh, feedback from any of the original artists, by the way? Do you know the something corporate guys at all? Did you have a, have much chat with them afterwards? No, I wish. Uh, I've met Andrew McMahon like a time or two throughout the years. Uh, but the last time that I, um, you know, saw him, I guess, was probably like 10 years ago, you know. And um, I, I, I did, uh, Brett, the, the singer of the Juliana Theory, uh, we met on the Warp Tour cruise. Um, I guess I forget how long ago that was, like three years ago or wh whenever that was. Um, and, uh, and kind of chatted, you know, a little bit there and exchanged numbers and and he, he texted me and, and was, was super grateful and, uh, about me doing the August and Bethany uh, Juliana Theory cover. Uh, but other than that, I guess, yeah, I don't, uh, I'm not in contact. Well, uh, then also, so the, the first song on the EP, But Lauren, is a song uh, from an artist in Tallahassee named Mike Hansen that nobody really knows. He never kind of, you know, made it outside of Tallahassee necessarily, but he was a huge influence on me uh, growing up and one of my favorite artists of all time. That's actually kind of how it all started was I covered 
the song, but Lauren, I recorded from my wife. Uh, her name's Lauren as a, as a Valentine's day, just like thing. Um, and I ended up talking to Mike and I told him I did that and he wanted to hear it. And I showed him and he was like, dude, this is great. You need to put this out. Um, I mean, I was like, Oh, you know, maybe, maybe like that, that could be cool. Maybe I could record some other covers and it just kind of like all started from, from that. Um, but uh, you know, anyway, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, pretty well. Uh, yeah, very, very cool to hear from them. I'm sure, absolutely. Um, so you mentioned there just in passing, of course, things like the Warp Tour cruise. You know, we were hoping to see you over at Slam Dunk and all these kind of things. And you know, understandably, everyone's uh, everyone's schedules are kind of up in the air at the minute. I'm wondering now, though, because I've seen you do a few kind of solo things online again. You did Summer Show, and I've seen you do a few other things here and there. Are you guys thinking about? maybe around the EP or anything like that, any kind of live things online or any other, any other gig plans for when we can all get back to it? Where, what's the status on that a minute? Yeah, for sure. We actually have been having those conversations and I don't know exactly, you know, when or what it's going to be or, or any details, but I, I think I can say, you know, pretty confidently that this year we will do uh, at least one, you know, like virtual, performance kind of thing and and perhaps two um and i might even try and do some you know like much smaller scale you know more you know intimate kind of just like solo acoustic uh you know live show kind of things i don't know we're we're, we're gonna figure it out but it, it seems like that's kind of the move and that's what so many of our peers are doing and i've watched a lot of them that are great the the under oath uh ones were awesome the, the one the main did was incredible um and so it's kind of like you know hey here, here we are and uh it's 2020 i guess this is just what what we're doing this year and and um so i think we're gonna get the ball moving pretty soon on some of that stuff yeah i can see i mean it has been very interesting it's something i've spoken to a lot of people about just seeing the differences in the ways people approach it because yeah the world is kind of your oyster a little bit in terms of how you present yourself in the live stream things trying out all these different things i mean you mentioned under oath there is there any other ones you've seen in particular that uh that kind of sparked your interest under oath and the main were amazing performances yeah and then i guess all time low had that like acoustic one they did that was really cool those are the only three that i guess i've i've got the chance to to watch um, but I feel like I was really inspired by all, you know, different things about all three of those. And, uh, it's cool to see like the different ways, like they were all, you know, pretty different from each other. Um, but, but all kind of, you know, cool in their own unique way. Um, and so I guess that's the idea is to just kind of, you know, put your own spin on it and, uh, and just kind of see what happens. But yeah. Yeah, very true. Now, it'd be cool to see what you guys come up with. Uh, Derek, I'll leave you with this, really, which is to just kind of say, what is next for you, man? Like, I mean, this EP is obviously still to come, which is very exciting. Potential uh, plans, potential other things here and there. In terms of the full length, I know schedules have gone insane now, but have you thought about when? That might, are you looking at next year, maybe, or anything like that? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's, again, it's, as you mentioned, it's so hard to plan yeah. anything right now. But the, the, we're, we're hopeful that we can get in this year and possibly finish uh, recording the full length. It's going to depend on a lot of things. And it's, it's also, um, yeah, it depends on the, the material that we have and whether we feel like we're ready yet um, to, to put out, a, you know, to record, a, I guess, a full length worth of material. Um, but that's, you know, what we're certainly trying to do is to finish up a, a full length this year have it out by you know next summer maybe possibly but that all you know is very loose and could, ch could change um but in the meantime there's also a lot of like everyone's kind of doing um you know like jake's doing his via fiori sort of solo project thing which is really cool and um i i am actually beyond the the covers thing i have an ep of just original songs that i've uh written and recorded mostly done that sh that hopefully should be out next year maybe maybe february maybe a year after the last one who knows uh there's also another kind of small side project thing i've been working on that i'm pretty excited about um that i guess i can't really say too much about yet but just you know like trying to um stay like just busy and active and and working on as much music as possible and there are a lot of things in the works that uh i'm, I'm very excited about so it's it's cool it's good to even though this year has been just kind of the worst, it's it's good to have things to look forward to and things that I'm excited about. And uh, it's uh, it's a good thing for sure. 
Yeah, always good to see people taking this this kind of horrible situation and the time that we've been given and uh, and do things with it. It's always really cool to see, man. You're not alone in that. It's very, very cool. Uh, Derek, always good to chat to you, man. All the best to you. I really like the EP and it's going to be great for people to hear it. And, uh, and, you know, just all the best to you and the family. And we will see you in the UK, hopefully, sooner rather than later, man. All right? That sounds great. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure. Always good to see you. All right, Derek, everybody.